Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Renee and I am a fiber artist. I spin, knit, crochet, um, and dabble in a lot of fiber art things. And I also raise Angor rabbits and Angor goats. And so we have a small fiber farm here. And I am so glad you're here today. Um, today is Friday and um, we are actually awaiting a historical um, snowstorm. The word blizzard has been used more than once. So we'll wait and see. It's, <laughs> it's supposed to be snowing like right now. Uh, the radar shows us in the thick of it and I'm looking out the window and there's nothing happening yet. So um, typical for Michigan, you never know what you're going to get when you're going to get it. Um, I think it is coming. I think it's just a little later than what they expected. And so typically when these storms move over the Great Lakes, um, they kind of morph and change. So we never quite know what we're going to get. Um, so today, like I said, it's Friday. I'm filming for my Sunday morning video. And today I am hopping on to talk about um, felting Angora. Uh, I had this question on, I think it was on my Instagram last week. Um, someone asked if... Um, how angora felted and i'm going to show you exactly how it does um it actually does quite well and i am in our basement kitchen here um so i have access to the hot water and um yeah let's get started uh basically felting is just um hot water or a mixture between hot and cold water um soap and agitation and that's when you're going to get felting um, Sometimes you don't need all of those things to get felting, depending on the material. Um, I have unexpectedly felted stuff without the soap part. Um, it's one of those sciences that <laughs> um, we mess up on sometimes. But <clears throat> for the most part, if you have those three things, you are going to be able to felt um, Angora. Today, we're going to do wet felting. Um, you can do... Uh, needle felt team, which I have tinkered with some. Um, I I always say that needle felters are some of the most amazing fiber artists out there. Be and I'm thinking of the ones that do like the animals and things that are needle felted and they look just like animals. And it's just am amazing to me how they are able to do that. Um, and I just don't have... I don't think I have that in me. I don't have that. Um, it'd be like painting, excuse me, painting a portrait or drawing. I don't have those skills. And so I think they're amazing. Um, and I have tinkered with needle felting. Um, I've actually been playing with it this winter to try to make pom-poms um, out of Angora haven't quite gotten there yet. I'm still working on that one, um, but that might be another video for later. So this will be wet felting. Um, all you need is hot water, a basket full of Angora, um, some kind of dish soap. Um, I have my Dawn down here because this is where I've been filming, cleaning the mohair and things like that. And so I had my Dawn. So I just am using that today. And then like, um, I think these are called like lingerie bags or um, laundry bags is what you're going to need to do this. Um, I did do some this morning already. I haven't felt it in a really long time. Um, I, and honestly, I am not great at felting. Um, I have one of our daughters. I used to pay her when she was living at home when she was young. I used to pay her a dollar a felted ball because she was just amazing at it. I don't know what that girl did um, or how she did it, but she could make the most beautiful um, felted Angor balls that there were. And I paid her for that ability and skill that she had. And so um, there are days when I wish she, she was still around to do this for me, but it does take patience. Um, and there is a threshold where your ball is not felted and then suddenly it's felted. And I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but I did do three this morning and actually I threw them in the dryer. They're not quite dry yet. So I probably need to dry them a little bit more. I did, let me make sure you could see this. I did a, get them in the right order. Um, I did a large one, a medium one, and then a small one, which didn't really felt well. It needs to be dried a little bit more, but you can kind of see 
what they look like. The medium one actually turned out really good. It's got some stiffness to it, which is what you want. And if you go, what I use these for or have used these for in the past, um, and I'll try to pop a picture in here because I was going to bring something down and I didn't. I have used these for keychains, um, like uh, just keychain hooks with beads on it and then a felted ball on it. And if you go to my website, my theme picture across the top, my header picture has a felted um necklace that i used to make felted necklaces so most of it was beads and then around the front would be just depending on how many felted balls i would start smaller and go to a large one in the center and then go back around so usually uh five to eight beads um depending on how big the necklace i was making so that is what i use them for i've made bracelets before also and so they can be used in jewelry making um, and also, I've made earrings out of them, which I also forgot to bring down. I am going to actually pause this video. I'm not going to redo it because I've got a good start. But let me pause this and go get my earrings and my thing, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Um, so, this is some of the first jewelry that I started making years ago. Um, these are actually... These were my mom's. I made them for her probably 12, 15 years ago. And when she passed away, I got them back. Um, so these, as you can see, um, have no issues. They've gotten, they were stored away. So they're a little bit, I don't want to say lopsided, but they were um, in her jewelry box when, when I got them back and they were kind of smushed. And so, um, but as you can see, there's no, and these weren't stored um, there's no wool issues, um, moths haven't gotten them into, into them or anything like that. So this is where my jewelry started was actually with these earrings and with the, the felted balls. So that was one of the things I used to do with them. And like I said, the necklace, um, and then this is a planner cover that I made, um, probably 15 years ago and I crocheted this just to cover a, um, small notebook. Uh, I don't know what size this would be. Seven by nine, maybe. Um, but I made this keychain thing that's hooked in here. And that's one of my felted balls, too, right there. And so that's what I used to do with them is make. And this has a little bunny charm on it um, that I used to do with them. So, and this was dyed, obviously, I don't have purple angoras, but this was a dyed one um, that I did out of uh, some dyed fiber. So there are lots of things you can do with these. Um, and like I said, I did three sizes today. I find the bigger ones are easier to do um, just because when you get these little buggers in your hand and you are, are doing this with them, for me, um, this is just, I don't know what it is. It's, it's not as simple as taking a large one and rolling it in your hand. And that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to turn on the water and get that heated up. Um, I've also talked before about how Angora is a little bit water resistant. Um, it's one of its great um, properties is that it kind of bounces the water off. You've seen that when I've washed fiber or dyed fiber. It really needs to soak some. Um, and I have just a basket of clipped, um, this is chestnut. I don't know if the colors are going to come through real well, but this is a, a big thing of clipped chestnut that I have here. And I am just going to pick out a small amount to get started. I find that if you get your core of your um, ball wet first. So I'm just taking, I don't know, just a small pinch and I'm going to wet my hands and hopefully the mic is working through with the water. And I'm going to get this wet and I am going to start twisting this. I'm trying to figure out what the best way to do this is so you can see it. Um, 
twisting it around until I have a somewhat of a ball. And we're, we're going to add to this here in just a minute. But the trick is to get this. Hey, everybody. I am. It's the next day. I was just putting my video together and the voice went out. So I think my mic shut down on me. Like I said, it was a new mic that I was trying and I'm still trying. So um, I want to get this video done today and so I can get it out for tomorrow. So I am going to finish it off again. Um, I did finish the couple of balls <laughs> whoops, that I was doing um, on the video. And so I was right here. You're going to see me cut the cut the uh, video and this is where we're at. So I was just putting together um, and talking about how important it is to get this core um, nice and tight. And so I have a bowl of hot water right here. I'm going to turn on and I don't have my mic. Um, so I'm going to stay closer to the camera. Um, I have a bowl of hot water with soap right here. Um, in front of me and so I am just going to take a small amount and start twisting it and wrapping the fiber around and I'm going to add a little bit more fiber to this. This part gets a little bit clunky because fiber, the angora sticks to everything anyways um, and as you're doing this you're going to get show you what I'm doing. I'm just tightly making um, a little ball and I'm twisting the fiber around and it is wet and it will make a nice little, um, I want to make kind of a medium one. I think I already talked about uh, the larger ones are a bit easier to make and I'm just wetting my fingers a little bit. Um, to do this part of it. See there, I kind of have a roll. So I'm rolling it and then turning it as I'm doing that. And I think that is going to be perfect size. So once you get um, your ball, you're just going to get it wet with the hot water. That one's gotten a little bit cooler. It already has soap in it and so you're just going to essentially roll this and I like to do this method where you're kind of squeezing it back and forth. I'm going to add a little hot water to this one. over here. I'm going to add a little bit more soap to the bowl. You don't need a lot, just enough. And I essentially am going to work back and forth. And you're going to feel, um, you will know once this is ready to be done, you're going to feel it get very solid in the midst of this process. It does take a little bit of time um, to get to that point, but you will feel it become um, more of a solid type. Like when you squeeze it, there's some, there's some solid to it. <coughs> and so I'm just going to go back and forth between my hands, squeezing it, and then I'm going to start rolling it. A little bit more wet and this is the felting process if you feel like you want to um, make it bigger you can do that at this point just by taking a small amount and you would just wrap it around the base um, of what you've had what you have made just like that it's almost like a bale of hay that you're making and 
squeezing as you go along with the with the hot water and the soap and so it's a lot of working that's why these um, medium to bigger sized felted balls are a little bit easier to work with or easier to make for me um, I think I already talked about this and if I didn't this might be a repeat um, but I have my hands starting to show their age a little bit so um, I have a little bit of arthritis in my fingers and some of this stuff to do little pieces um, I did let's see where's my small ball I did a small ball yesterday and um, I had showed you the earrings also so I added to it and I'm just gonna keep doing the motions this is the agitation that I talked about at the beginning of the video um, add a little soap and water and agitate and there will come a point where this is going to solidify and you will feel it solidify there's a little bit of patience involved in this too but you will get there and I can kind of feel it right now getting more solid in the center that um, that center of the ball getting more solid and then I'm just going to take it and I typically rub it like this in my hands so that I'm agitating the outside and you end up with this little felted ball that you can rinse in hot water try to get some of that soap out it's not really important but um, I usually do this end squeeze you will find that sweet spot where you can feel and this does take practice um, but I have ball so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna pop it in my lingerie bag and I usually um, I will put that in with towels or blankets usually towels is what I have pop it in the uh, dryer for depending on um, how big your ball is this one I had yesterday made this is a bigger one and this one I had popped in for about 30 minutes and it still needed a little bit more time it was still wet in the um, you could feel it so um, that is all it takes to make felted angora balls so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below I'd be glad to help um, if you like this video please click that like button and if you don't already please subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Um, if you're in the middle of the storm, which we did end up getting, um, we have more snow coming tonight. I hope you're staying safe and I hope you get to create something this weekend. Have a great weekend. Bye.